Well, hello, free people of the Rocky Mountain region, and welcome to this Free State Colorado interview. Today, I'm joined by Lori Sane, Weld County Commissioner. Commissioner Sane, I hope you are well, and thank you for joining me today. Well, thank you for the time this evening. Well, in early March 2024, the Weld County Board of Commissioners decided to remove general public comment from county business meetings. You know, Weld County has been viewed as a stronghold of liberty, so this announcement has been met with a lot of outcry by individuals across the county and really across the state. So, Commissioner, can you provide some background on this decision and why the other commissioners feel justified in eliminating general public comment? Uh, certainly, Brandon. It was pretty much a shock to me as well. This decision was obviously made behind closed doors without inviting me to the conversation or to the public. Uh, they didn't invite the public to the conversation. And quite honestly, I don't think there's any justification for it. We actually have county code for a reason. And as the executive and legislative branch, uh, we are supposed to uphold our own law. And uh, public comment has been part of our code for over 30 years. So if we're going to change um, anything in our code, we are supposed to publish it, have a three reading process, wherein, by the way, public comment would have been allowed on public comment, and that process was not followed. And so this was decided, uh, supposedly, at first just by the chair, Kevin Ross, and then he admitted in emails to others, well, I can't make a decision unilaterally, so it's, you know, it was the majority of the board. So he just admitted they had a meeting without me there. I was not a part of this meeting to take away public comment. So what I decided to do is, is make everything um, extremely transparent. So I've been doing all my business um, really at the Board of County Commissioners and making a motion to reinstate public comment. Um, I also made a commitment to uh, make that motion at every single meeting until it was restored. I uh, finally hit pay dirt on the fourth meeting. So four commissioners, that would be Perry Buck, Mike Freeman, uh, Kevin uh, Kevin Ross and Scott James all voted against reinstating public comment three times. On the fourth time, I was successful, but only for one day. And then they had to talk about it some more. So at that point, I asked for a work session that was denied. And so these conversations behind closed doors, again, it was admitted that they had made this decision. They did not invite me to the meeting that they had. Uh, my ne The next response was from a rich, an, our county attorney who said that the communication was confidential and privileged, and we would make the decision on email, which again is not open and transparent to the public. So I refused to do that. Again, went ahead and made a motion on Monday to re re basically reinstate public comment to the form it was before, because now they're trying to put it on a 15 minute time limit. Um, and that died through a lack of second. And then I made a point of order at the end of the meeting saying that we need to have a work session uh, be transparent about this conversation, and we need to have one. And I was told I'd have to ask the chair. Well, Brandon, um, I'm an elected official who represents 100,000 people or more. And in the past, any commissioner that's asked for a work session has been granted one. I'm asking on the reason of county business. I'm not just asking for uh, a purpose that's not related to what we do. And public comment um, is related to what we do. Um, this is a form of where we can hear from the public how we're doing. And it's a constitutional duty for us to listen, even if we don't like what is being said. It is a, a right to a petition the government for, uh, for grievances. And that is expanded rights that uh, SCOTUS has ruled upon. It's an like expansion of free speech. So for us to limit that basically says, well, we only want to hear from you for so much time or some of the time. And um, that's not right. We've just had public comment meetings run over an hour and a half in Fort Collins and in the city of Evans. Um, that was certainly valuable testimony for their county councils. And in fact, even though people duct tape themselves to the wall or glued themselves to the wall in Fort Collins, their answer to this is actually to add more free speech. At an hour before the meeting and then a um, time after the meeting for whatever is on the citizen's mind. So. You know, uh, for, for the chair to I mean, reference Fort Collins like he's done in several news articles, well, we did it because of Fort Collins. I don't know what that jurisdiction has anything to do with us, first of all. Um, if they decided that a citizen has to hit a dartboard in the boardroom to get their concerns heard and hit the bullseye exactly, that's still more free speech than what we were having when they got rid of it. So you're telling me Fort Collins, uh, you know, this much more liberal kind of left-leaning Democrat is quickly becoming a Democratic stronghold, unfortunately. 
uh, had this issue with people kind of hijacking the public comments. That's some of the justification mm -hmm. of why Weld County commissioners feel feel they can do this. And in the response from Fort Collins is to increase more public comment, to increase free speech, to give people more opportunity to speak. Well, the Weld County is supposed to be this champion of, of liberty, uh, liberty Republicans, you know, people who believe in the Constitution and representative government have gone the exact opposite approach. I mean, is that is that really what's going on here? That, that's exactly what's going on, especially when you try to reference Fort Collins and say, look, they glue themselves to the wall, so we have to get rid of public comment. So it, the spin zone that's been going on, the first excuse was, oh, these citizens, we didn't like what they said. And this is in response to a non-sanctuary resolution that I had tried to get on the calendar, um, unsuccessfully the first two times and then successfully at least the third time. And then the citizens who came to speak uh, when it was added to the calendar were not allowed to speak on something on the agenda. So of course they used the public comment period afterwards. And the chair said it's their fault. They didn't, they didn't follow procedure. Well, well, first you didn't allow them to speak on something on the agenda, so which is it? And so he blamed them. And then the second excuse to the press was, well, staff felt threatened. So I've asked some reporters, I asked some people on the outside, look at these public comments and see if there was anything threatening. So we have an activist who said that she wanted her husband to feel safe. Hardly threatening comment, right? Stepping in for your husband to make sure he feels safe with a resolution. Um, the other one was a pastor who actually said words have meaning. Oh, no. That's that's horrible, right? So um, so he shut down public comment for the citizens were out of out of procedure. The second was staff felt threatened. Um, the, the third one was Fort Collins, and in the fourth iteration, it was my fault. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't speak during public comment, <laughs> so uh, I don't know how it's my fault, right? So uh, the spin zone has just been going crazy. So I'd like to see what their next iteration is for the excuses. But um, they simply just don't want to hear from the public. They don't want to hear from the people they serve. Um, they want to make decisions for you without any input at all, apparently. But, you know, and then there is this uh, argument that they can replace public comment with town halls and that'll be sufficient. Well, if you control the town hall and what questions can be uh, answered or, you know, I was cut off, I don't know how many times at the last town hall they had. Um, I was the only speaker that was interrupted constantly. Um, you know, that's not a that's not a useful exercise. And the, let's be honest, it's a taxpayer funded building. Our salaries are paid by the taxpayer. So we they should have an opportunity anytime we're having a meeting and doing the public business to voice their opinion of what's going on. So none of those excuses hold water. Uh, we should always have public comment. There's two ex-mayors on that board of county commissioners. So they know how valuable public comment is. And by the way, the last excuse I just heard was, well, um, we, we want to keep it just to county business. The public is our business. They're our boss. And somehow we've forgotten that. And some excuse where we're going on into the night and using up staff time, well, it's at the end of the meeting, staff can leave after they make the presentations. Our average public comment time if you average it out over the last three years, is about three minutes. That's hardly taken up too much time. Well, I do applaud your efforts to get the other commissioners on record, to get them publicly stating that they are opposing uh, general public comment for, for the people of Weld County, because I think that's so important. And, you know, last time we talked to commissioner, it seems... It, it really makes me think that there's this pattern, right? Being like you talked about being excluded from meetings, um, secret closed door meetings, business, you know, maybe violating Colorado's open meeting laws, Colorado sunshine laws, trying to these wealth county commissioners besides yourself seem to be trying to really exert some control over the county uh, government uh, outside of the purview of the public and they don't want to be exposed. I mean, is this is this an issue that has been going on for a long time and is now just being exposed because we have somebody like you in there who can kind of shine the light on this? Has Wealth County been this good old boys network where they're making behind the scenes deals? and Or has this happened recently in terms of, you know, Wealth County being this bastion of liberty and freedom and some corrupting forces taking over? I mean, which is it? Well, as I mentioned last time, we had an abrupt change in attitude when we had a, a, a new commissioner come on board, Kevin Ross, who is now the chair of the Board of County Commissioners. And that's where some of the trouble started. And so um, some of the exclusion of keeping me out of meetings started happening in July of last year. And I just noticed I was being attacked more and more for just random weird stuff. And, and it's not because I haven't been doing my job, Brandon. I have been saying we shouldn't do this. 
I warn them. I don't just sit there and let them make mistakes. I make sure to say, hey, I think that's violating open meetings law. Hey, I don't think that's the right path to take. And I've done a lot. I've done a lot of that in the first two years because we've got some staff that have some very. I'll just come out with it. it. It seems very on the socialist, communist side as far as how they want to see the county run and some of these agenda twenty one things that are popping up all of a sudden, including environmental justice warriors and uh, taking away people's private property rights. So this ball is accelerating really fast under this new um, uh, board chairman, and it's it's very scary to me what's going on. But I have an audio clip on my last newsletter email that I've sent out a couple days ago where Mike Freeman is on the record and he can't say he didn't know because I said I was reporting it two times. And he says, well, you can't attend our briefings because the way you vote. Well, again, I vote for my district. And if the expectation was I'd come on this board and vote with everyone else, because that's basically what he's saying, um, we're going to exclude you because you vote differently from us. No, I'm not going to vote for more taxes. My district doesn't want more taxes, and yet you've got them on record voting for this. Um, that's not limited government. That's not what people are asking for. And then you're also on record lying about how you're going to use the money. And this is on public audio. I mean, it's just so out there and audacious that they just say these things knowing they're being recorded. And, um, you know, I represent 100,000 people. And again, I should not be excluded from meetings where you're making decisions, one. And two, a lot of those decisions are now being hid behind closed doors where they weren't before. So obviously this is wrong. Um, the things that are going on need to be out in the public, in the sunlight, so people can see how we are making decisions. That's what work sessions are for. We make policy and we are supposed to direct staff to then go and act or write that policy um, so it is actually um, executed through the departments. And you know, money is policy. We've talked about that before. And how we use our money matters. So yeah. one of the things we may get a chance to talk about tonight, if you've got time, is a surprise announcement from the sheriff that said, gosh, um, this might be, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, this could be a deputy-free zone, which basically signals to criminals and maybe illegal aliens uh, crossing our borders that uh, we're not going to have as many people watching anymore because we have a disabled sheriff's department because he didn't get the funding he asked for. Well, you can hear on some of these audios, I'm the only person fighting for the sheriff to have full funding because we have a lot of pork in our budget. I mean, we have four reporters. We have four reporters to make us look good in Weld County. How many people do we need to employ to say the emperor has no clothes on at this point, right? So we've got a lot of uh, extras in our budget, like the county attorney has a, a, a whole army of consultants and lobbyists. Um, a lot of it has been directed at the state to uh, talk them into some common sense. We can see how that's been working over the last three years. Uh, we also have, again, Departments doing environmental justice. Why are we spending staff time on this? This is a whole change in attitude of what's been going on the last couple of years. So it is a completely toxic environment. It is hard to work in this environment. I have been shoved out of offices physically. I've been screamed at. Uh, some of this I have on audio. It's just incredible that they don't care who's listening or, or who's watching. Wow. Wow. So, you know, here we are. This is March 25th. Where does it stand? So, you know, I, ju I actually just moved to Weld County uh, mm -hmm. just recently. So if I showed up to a, a county board meeting and wanted to voice my concerns, maybe as a new resident, a new voter, a new taxpayer to the community, uh, gets asking for information about the county and maybe sharing some thoughts, some information that I'm bringing to the county from, from other places across the state, uh, what would happen? I mean, would I be allowed to speak? Um, I think you'd be limited to three minutes, but as long as there aren't anybody in front of you, there isn't anybody in front of you or not a line, I think you'll be able to speak. Depends on the majority vote now if you get to speak after 15 minutes. Wow. So basically wow. what happened in Evans can't happen in Weld County without a vote of the majority saying, we will hear you now, <laughs> which is ridiculous. So I'm going to keep making the motion to restore public comment to the way it was, and we'll see how they vote. So the county, these other county commissioners do not want to hear from the voters. They don't want to be challenged. It sounds like they don't want to be uh, exposed, especially for for what they're doing. I mean, how how are they able to hold closed door meetings legally? I mean, how is this possibly legal under Colorado Sunshine laws? I don't think it is, and I, quite honestly, I'm going to expose some of those things. I've been exposing some of it on Facebook, saying I've asked for this, it was denied. 
Um, they're having secretive meetings. So I've been putting it out there so people understand that this is what I'm facing, is that we're having meetings without me on very important issues, including, by the way, the sheriff's budget. They obviously talked about this in another meeting and another briefing that I'm not invited to. They've actually slammed the door in my face. They've stood in front of me so I can't enter into the doorway where these, they're having these meetings. And again, this is on video and audio. So um, they obviously had some kind of agreement with the sheriff that they were going to bring this forward, a mid-year adjustment for him, which still isn't what he asked for. It's still not as much as what he needs apparently operationally to function. And, and yet um, it's coming out of our reserves, which is wrong, because we should cut you know, our budget just like you do at home when you don't have as many resources. You have to cut out the nice to haves and, you know, four people working under our public information officer is a nice to have, right? But it's not a need to have. Um, our, our primary job is the health, safety, and welfare of the citizen in a very broad sense. And, and part of that is upholding individual rights like the First Amendment. We take an oath to the U.S. Constitution as well as an oath to the state constitution. Um, so, you know, this... This obviously has, has got to stop. These secret meetings have absolutely got to stop. And I will keep uh, on this until it is exposed. Um, I don't know um, exactly where they get the authority other than they say the county attorney says, well, I've already blessed this. You can go on the habit. For them to cancel, for example, a public meeting on what's called a plan unit development process, which is a, a standard planning term, right? It's not, uh, it's a product that, Every state uses is actually enshrined in uh, in our state law um, that you can use this planning product. They cancel it because they didn't want criticism from people showing up. And then they had their own meeting that was completely unnoticed. And, and you can hear me saying, no, you should not have this meeting because you just canceled the public one and now you're having a secret one. And the attorney have blessed this. So this can't continue going on like this because we can't make good decisions without if we can't make them in front of the public, they must not be good decisions. Yeah, that's a very fair point. So what can the public do? You know, say somebody believes in liberty and freedom, uh, the idea of representative government here in Weld County. What can they do to, to kind of push back against this creeping authoritarianism? Well, one thing is I would start showing up for public comment. And um, if you're not being heard, there's a case for a lawsuit, for one thing. Um, but start pushing back and say, we don't like this totalitarianism that's creeping up in Weld County. There's a reason people move here. And quite honestly, um, our freedom is at stake because we live in a blue state and we can't afford to lose Weld County and the freedoms that we have fought so hard for. And we cannot, as citizens, we with, with self-governance, governance means that you hold your elected officials accountable. So that means that, you know, we the people have got to get off our, our seats and, and and go and confront and say here's where here's how we would like to be governed you know that's a, that's the representative government is i go in and deal with this mess so you don't have to so you can go and pursue your happiness so you can do the job raise your family and and i'm here to represent you by my votes right because that's our first job is to vote right um but we, we need to start having people show up and say, we don't want to see any more of the secrecy going on in Weld County. We want to see you making decisions in an open and transparent environment that's been provided through public work sessions. And, and you know, stop, um, you know, basically canceling one commissioner because of the way she votes. I vote with them probably 97% of the time, but that 3% where I'm voting against more government and more fees, I'm voting against more fees against businesses. Um, Yes, I vote differently because that's what I've sent there to do is to represent District 3. Well, so when are when and where are these commission meetings where people can show up for public comment? They can show up on Monday and Wednesday at 9 a.m. And so public comment is now at the back of the calendar or back of the agenda, I'm sorry. So you do have to wait for the rest of the business to be concluded before you are heard. Uh, I have made the comment before that we need to keep that in the front of the meeting because that's very valuable information, especially um, if we are going to vote on something and not open it up to public comment. That certainly has happened a lot recently where people were not allowed that opportunity. And where are the county commission meetings held? It's 1150 O Street, and that is uh, Greeley, Colorado. So we're at the very uh, northeastern part of Greeley, right at uh, Highway 85, actually, in O Street. 
Okay. Well, and I'd say one other thing that uh, individuals can do across Wealth County is hold these elected officials accountable. You know, I know many of them have further political agendas, uh, you know, plans for themselves and their political careers. So really people being outspoken, holding them to account and maybe pushing back on them if they try and run for higher office or try and run for reelection and, and really hold them accountable through the ballot box. I think that that's that needs to happen as well. Right. And I think that's already happened with a certain congressional race after a certain candidate made the case that we just want to spend your overage money on a building that we're not going to build. That obviously didn't work out well for him. Um, but, uh, you know, again, there's primaries uh, for two of the actually three of these seats. So it, it is incumbent upon folks to vote for somebody who actually represents you and actually represents what the Republican Party is supposed to stand for. Um, so there's three primaries for, uh, there's one at-large seat where I'm running for that seat. Obviously, I think I would be the Liberty candidate in that seat based on my votes. Um, there's a, a primary for District 3 uh, with Lynette Kilpatrick-Pepler. Um, she is going to vote very close to how I'm going to vote. Uh, she's a very pro-Liberty candidate. Um, and then we've got a, a race in District 1 between two candidates. I can't say I know uh, one of the candidates very well, but at least you have a choice in that district because uh, Mike Freeman is term limited. So you have three chances to ask candidates, um, how would you have voted on this um, public comment issue? And, and by the way, um, the tax raise that the other commissioners uh, sought to produce, and you can hear them uh, negotiating at one point, like, well, what if we just gave them back 1% instead of, you know, the you know, 3% we're supposed to give them. I mean, it's just been crazy listening to some of this stuff. How would you have voted on that and see what they say? But of course, back to this, Brandon, as you know, politicians can say anything, especially during the primary season. Yeah. I'm pro-life, I'm pro-gun, I'm for limited government. It's how you vote. It's how you vote. And that's how you can have a litmus test on these politicians. Do they really represent you? Or are they just saying they're going to represent you? Well, I did want to bring up the Lost Creek Guide out of Keensburg. I'm good friends with Mayor Aaron Lamb of Keensburg. So he shared with me uh, this great local newspaper. Uh, they yeah. shared some of my uh, work before, so really always love to be able to promote them as well. But they posted this, or you know, not posted, I guess, I'm too used to the internet, but published this uh, guest column by Commis Commissioner Kevin Ross, the chair, uh, defending removing public comment from the Weld County Board of Commissioners agenda and, you know, he complains that people are showing up to speak about issues that the county commission has no authority over, specifically um, non-county related items, quote, such as illegal immigration. The county has no jurisdiction over that. So I know that's an issue that's obviously a major political issue. Is that true, yeah. Commissioner, saying that the Weld County has, can do nothing about illegal immigration in Weld? In Weld? So interesting enough, in, public, uh, in a public meeting that was recorded, I asked the question that many of our constituents are asking, if a busload of illegal immigrants is dropped off, his answer is we will do nothing. Well, first of all, not having a plan for things that probably will happen is not acceptable. And secondly, my resolution stated very clearly that we are not to misuse taxpayer funds in aiding the federal immigration crisis. And that includes uh, funding through any of our departments or any grants to uh, cities or towns that declare themselves sanctuary cities or towns or found acting as such. But the reason they won't sign it is because we are using funds for illegal immigrants, as it turns out. How, can you elaborate on that? At, at this point, people want to be not only America first, but Weld County first. We can't even take care of our own homeless here or our veterans. And we're spending money and staff time. If we're spending money and staff time on people that aren't citizens of Weld County, then what kind of message are we sending? You can't have open borders and socialism at the same time. It has never worked. It has never worked. So, you know, we have got to make sure that we encourage legal immigration. Absolutely. I'm 100% for legal immigration. But illegal immigration is harmful to everyone, especially children and some of this human trafficking that's going on right now. It is absolutely horrifying what's going on over the border right now. SCOTUS just, just sided with Texas. They're going to allow their local law enforcement to detain and deport illegal immigrants. And so Douglas County has, is joining a is, is doing a lawsuit, which they've asked uh, Weld County to join. I made that motion. I'm calling a work session on Wednesday to help, to hopefully join Douglas County and suing the state 
over some of these unconstitutional laws that are supposedly handcuffing our sheriffs from cooperating uh, with detention and with deportation with ICE. So supposedly there's there's several um, laws that are mentioned in the resolution I run that have handcuffed our sheriff, have tied up our courts. There's five laws that basically have been passed that I voted no on two of them, by the way, that we have taken position as a board against. And those laws need to be challenged. Uh, Governor Polis has purposely made us a sanctuary state. And this is what we've ended up with because he's made the, the door open. So I'm all for legal immigration. Yes, it needs to change, especially for people who are coming here to work and do it legally. But we should not have an open checkbook if we have an open border. It doesn't work. And obviously, we see the destruction of Denver going on right now, where people don't even want to go to certain places downtown and businesses are dying. That can't continue. Yeah, no, all good points there. And I think the voters, uh, particularly this year, would be very interested to know if some of these county commissioners were were pushing these issues using taxpayer funds to to support this uh, open border agenda. I think that'd be uh, very interesting to get that information out to the public for sure. So look forward to hearing more about that. But one issue I want to touch on before we before we end tonight is what you mentioned before about Wealth County sheriffs. Of course, you know crime is one of the biggest issues out here in Colorado right now. The Denver metro area is a, it seems to be a very dangerous place these days. I mean, you can't go a day without there being a mention of stabbings, shootings, uh, right. gang activity, drug overdoses, homelessness. I mean, it's it's getting out of control to where a lot of people are leaving the Denver metro area and moving to Weld County, moving to other more rural areas to have a better lifestyle, to have a better quality of life for their family, for their kids, to be able to raise them in a safer environment with open skies and, and a little bit more freedom. So the fact that the county commissioners are not necessarily willing to to step up to the plate to help the Weld County Sheriff out, I think is a, is a really interesting issue. Can you just touch on that uh, one more time here? Yeah, again, um, and it's basically a red flag uh, for everyone when a sheriff makes an announcement like that, especially surprising us and saying, oh, by the way, I'm going to you know, cut some services. Um, if we're not willing to sign a non-sanctuary agreement, we're basically rolling out the red carpet, say, hey, we've got less coverage with law enforcement, come on over, right? Especially with criminals. Consider that 43% of the people crossing our border right now are coming from countries other than Mexico or Central America. They're coming from Russia. They're coming from China. We have no idea who these people are. They could be terrorists. They could be gang members. We have no clue. Um, we need to control the border. And so the resolution also calls on the federal government and our Congress people to do their job and enforce the border. Because you know, as of right now, uh, we might as well be a sanctuary county by not announcing it but also having the sheriff announce suddenly, we might not have patrols out there. And quite honestly, it, it is a situation that is untenable, especially if you say, we're not gonna provide the certain service that nobody else is providing, which is animal control, right? Dogs at large might not be as dangerous as people think, but the fact that it's not being provided and your taxpayer money is supposed to go to that, we need to find another solution, whether we need to privatize that or move it to a different department immediately. Well, I really appreciate uh, you talking to me this evening, getting this information out there to the voters. I think the public comment issue uh, is becoming a bigger issue than it's ever been. You know, I have a lot of uh, friends, colleagues, uh, there are other liberty activists going down at the state capitol pretty regularly this year to speak out. And I can only imagine that those state legislators, some of these authoritarian democratic socialists, wish they could do what Weld County is doing by silencing the public, silencing their critics, and and trying to maintain this facade of representative government, but but without actually hearing from the people. I mean, how wonderful must that be? I'm sure these radical leftist Democrats are are, are wishing they can mimic what Wealth County commissioners are doing. How are they any different than the state government right now as far as, you know, the law that they just passed exempting them from open meetings laws? Yeah, fair point. Fair point. Uh, an issue that continues to become more relevant than ever, and especially with the internet and the ability for people, for us to have these kind of conversations and get it online and have people see it. You know, the the gatekeepers and the old media are gone. Uh, people are interested yeah. in new information and getting it out there is frightening a lot of politicians. So interesting yeah. times we're in. Uh, really appreciate you coming on, Commissioner Sane, and look forward to hearing more in the future. And I will keep fighting against the limitation of public comment until it's restored fully. Uh, one last thing, how can people support you in your campaign for your at-large race? 
Um, they can go to sane for weld dot com and that's F O R or the numeral four. And you can see some of my endorsements. One of them includes uh, Mayor Aaron Lamb. And I did sign the Libertarian Party Pledge, by the way. Very easy to do since I think about nine of those issues I ran bills on. That makes it easy for sure. Definitely. Well, wonderful. Well, I didn't know that and really excited to hear that. I'll definitely make sure uh, everybody is aware of that. That's great that we have a champion for liberty in Weld County. So keep up the good work and uh, let's see what we can do to right the ship. All right. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Brandon. All right. Take care.